Okay, here we are at section 3.4, which is algorithms for whole number addition and subtraction. Odds are you have seen at least one of the things we're going to do today, but this is where we get into like the what people are going to refer to as common core or new math. We can we can have all kinds of arguments about it, but in the end, um, you're going to find that I come down on the side of kids should have options for how they want to add and subtract. And you know what? Some of these ways are easier once you get used to them. You also need to make sure that going into this, you have your base 10 blocks cut out. They were in um, the assignment overview for this section. So if you have not done that yet, please go do that right now and then come back. Okay. So in second grade, one of the standards says that kids should be able to add and subtract within a thousand. They have to use concrete models and drawings and different strategies based on place value, based on properties operations, based on the relationship between addition and subtraction. So what you do when you teach kids algorithms um, is you help them to understand place value is a part of how they add and subtract. You help them to understand the relationship between addition and subtraction. You help them to understand strategies for um, actually adding and actually subtraction that are repeatable, that they can use time and time again, that they can use to take apart numbers and put them back together in a way that makes sense for them. So an algorithm is the set of steps that are used to solve a problem. They are about efficiency in the end. So we want to give kids ways to be efficient and accurate as they add and subtract and multiply and divide. Okay, we always start with concrete, thing, things in their fingers, things in their hands, hence the base 10 blocks. And then we move them to a more standard algorithm. We help them to see, you know, if you use the base 10 blocks, you can turn it into this on paper, and then we can make that faster. But if you use the base 10 blocks, they always have some place to fall back on. They can picture them in their heads. And it's important to, that kids have a place to go. All right. So with base 10 blocks, if you have seen them or not, um, this is an example of 12 plus 25. The longs are 10, yours are divided into 10 little boxes. So this is 10, red boxes are 11, 12. Over here, this is 25, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five. When I add them together, all I do is smoosh, right? So I got 10, 20, 30, and seven. Okay, so if I think of this as expanded notation, I can think of this as adding two and five, which gets me seven, as 10 and 20, which gets me 30, that makes 37, okay? You want them to see the place value inside of here. So this is the idea in here, this is the expanded notation. So it's one times 10 plus two, one, 10 and two, two times 10, plus five, that's 20. We can regroup the tens and the ones. And that's what this next step is. One times 10 plus two times 10, two plus five. That gets me one plus two times 10 plus two plus five. Three times 10 plus seven, 37. I know that looks like an insane way to do that. You are not going to do that with little kids necessarily, but you are going to sort of talk through it in that way. That's actually what you did here with these pictures. You just didn't think about it in all those teeny tiny steps. All right, so with your base 10 blocks, take them out in front of you and add up the following, 12 plus 27, nine plus 28, 13 plus 19, and the bottom one is 19 plus nine. When you do that, think about the kinds of things that kids are going to stop and do that are gonna be strange, or the places where it's gonna get sticky and you're gonna to have to talk about things. All right, so I have open, hopefully I can switch to it. I've opened a million things, but I have a base 10 block tool. Um, you can grab one of these online. All I did was look for base 10 block manipulatives. So I can make 12, here's my 12, and here's my 27, there's 27. So now just like 12 plus 25, I can add them together. I can just 10, 20, 30, I'm going to move those over here. Seven, eight, nine. So 12 plus 27 is 
29. 9 plus 28 is a little different. So let's uh, get rid of some stuff. The problem with this is then I then have to, well, I already have 9, that's lovely. So I'm going to make 28 over here, 10, 20. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'll move my 28 over there. Seven, eight. Oh, I stole one of my nines. So I have nine plus 28 here. Here's my nine. Here's my 28. I know I'm going to have 10, 20, right? But then I got a whole boatload of ones. What are you going to do with that? Well, what you want to teach kids is to take their ones and trade, right? I can trade these nine ones in for a 10 right? Oh, I want to make it, I want to group these guys. It won't let me, now it won't let me do it earlier. It let me, of course. So I'm going to imagine that that's a 10, okay? 10, 20, 30. And now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I added 9 plus 28. I got 37. I got to regroup 10 of my, oh, there it goes, 1s into a 10. All right, 13 plus 19, let's, uh oh, there's 10, 11, 12, 13, there's another 10, let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You see the same thing is going to happen here, right? I have 10 and I have 20, but now I have 9 and I can make 10 out of that. So I want to make 10 out of that. There it goes. So I have 10, 20, 30, 31, 32. Okay. And then 19 plus 9, you see how this is going. So that's 1. I want to ungroup that. Uh-oh, I broke it. Ungroup. Oh, okay, fine. There's 19. 1 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine. And then I need to add nine more to this. So you know what this is going to look like. If I add 19 and nine, I get 28. So I'd have my two, I'd make one 10 out of here, and then I have eight left over. So you see sort of how this works. All right. But you have to be able to, I know it seems like in some ways like a simple thing to do, but the more comfortable you are with those movements and the trading and the language and all of those things, the easier it is to do it with other people. It's impossible to do out loud to a group of kids what you haven't done yourself. It's, trust me, we've all done it. Okay, so here is um, the beginning sort of idea here. I can think about 2,453 is 2 to 10 times 10 to the third, 4 times 10 to the second, 5 times 10 to the first, plus 3. I can think of 326 as 3 times 10 to the second, 2 times 10 to the first, 6. And you can see what I think of 456 as. I can then add down by the place value they're in. Okay? So I get 15, 12 times 10, it's 120. Um, 11 times 100, which is 1100, and 2 times uh, 1000, that's 2000. Now I can just add all those together. Well, 2 and plus 1100 is 3100, plus 120 is 3220, plus 15 is 3235. Okay, this doing this kind of math, showing them in this way, a little awkward. You're going to do this with older kids, not second graders. But you are setting them up for this, for this kind of combining like terms later, for adding and subtracting polynomials, which is important because that's an algebra skill that's going to get them through high school, through college. Okay. So the essential addition algorithms that you need to know, and here's the thing, you'll have a test or a quiz 
and it will say use the left to right algorithm, use the lattice algorithm. You have to actually use that algorithm. You have to prove you can do all of these. Um, so left to right algorithm, um, the other thing I tend to call it partial sums, is the idea that you work from left to right. So you take the hundreds digits first. This six is worth 600. If you said this number out loud, you'd say 658. So you would take 600 first. You would do 600. Ooh, where's my pen? Pen. 600 plus the 500. That's 1100. Great. Then I'm going to do the tens. So that's 50 and 7. Oops, sorry, 50 and 70. And then 8 and 7. By place value, the important part of this algorithm is that kids never lose sense of the actual value of the numbers. This number is worth 600. This number is worth 50. This number is worth 8. Part of the trouble with the traditional algorithm kids have, the way you learn to add most likely, is that you lose the place value and it gets confusing about like when you shift and add a zero and what, well, how you carry, it's not an issue here. So then we just add down. So we have 1,100 uh, plus 120 is 1,220 plus another 15 is 1,235, okay? You try one. It's 592 plus 398, so three, Nine, eight, plus five, nine, two. Take a second, try it on paper. How does it work? Okay, so I'm going to do 500. I'm going to start with the hundreds place. 500 plus 300 is 800. Then I'm going to do the tens places. 90 plus 90 is 180 and then 2 plus 8 is 10. There's no, oh, that looks like a 6 but it's a 10. So 800 plus 180 is 980 plus 10 more, 990. This is flexibility with numbers and this actually, excuse me, if this becomes a way you're really good at, this is much more friendly for doing mental math than, than the traditional algorithm. This is much easier to do in your head, okay? So it's important, like if you do a lot of mental math, I bet you do this, you don't even realize it. All right, the lattice algorithm for addition is different than the lattice algorithm for multiplication, okay? So if you do lattice for multiplication, that's fine. This works differently. The lattice algorithm for addition is always one row of boxes, okay? One. Never, it's not a, an array, it's not a, an area model. So it's as many boxes from left to right, and I'm going to erase so that you guys can actually see this, as you have places. So if you have um, four places here, you'd have four rows of boxes. All right, and here's what happens. If you've never seen lattice before, this will be new. When you draw a lattice box, each box gets cut in the middle, okay? And then you extend your diagonals. These need to be extended. This is always the tens place, and this is always the ones place, okay? So if I add 8 and 7, I get 15. 1, 5, okay? You just add each number down. So now I'm going to add 5 and 7. That's 12. There is no carrying in this model. Well, not carrying up here. And then I add 6 and 5. That's 11. So 1, 1. Okay, make sure you know why everything's in the boxes. Now, with the lattice model, what you do from here is you slide down the diagonals. So now if I look down this way, I have five. I'm gonna look through this diagonal. One plus two is three. One plus one is two, one. Same problem we had before, same answer, 1,235. Okay, let's try this other question, 592 plus 398 as a lattice. So do that on your paper. I'm going to make my boxes, hopefully, neatly enough to do it. 
Okay, I'm gonna change colors. So in this case, eight plus two is 10. Nine and nine is 18. Five and three is eight. So if you don't have any tens, you put a zero in that box, eight. So now let's add down the diagonals. Zero plus nothing is zero. Eight and one is eight, nine. Eight and one is nine. And there's a zero out here. Well, my answer is 990. Same as it was before, okay? All right. The traditional algorithm is just two digits at a time. You begin with the digits um, in the units place, so the ones place, from right to left. We go the opposite direction. When you add up 10 or more, you carry, okay? That's scratch. So we use the scratch algorithm like this, right? We do seven plus eight is 15 plus five is 20. We put down the zero, we carry the two. Two and three is five, plus one is six, plus four is 10. We put down the zero, we carry the one. One and five is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12. We put down the two, we carry the one, we get 3,200, okay? This doesn't hold place value though, which is why it is um, not necessarily the one kids pick when you give them choices. At any rate, let's try the one we have. 592, 389, and 67. The thing to be aware of though is just because one of these algorithms is more comfortable for you as a grown up, as a teacher, as a person, doesn't mean that the kids you teach will be the same. I am comfortable with different algorithms than you are. My kids are different, comfortable with different algorithms than I am. You guys will all be comfortable with different algorithms. And we will talk about that actually in the discussion this week. Make, when you give kids options, they get to find the one that suits them. Like lattice is not for every kid. Kids who have really, um, are not, don't have good spatial awareness and or who have really tough time with handwriting, lattice is not their friend. It's too, ma it's too many like intricate things. But there are some kids that would whip out a lattice box at the drop of a hat. All right, so two and nine is 11, plus seven is 18. So eight, carry the one. Nine and one is 10, plus eight is 18, plus six is 24. Put down the four, carry the two. Five and two is seven, plus three is 10, okay? So you know the scratch algorithm likely, all right. The concrete, so that's all addition. Let's move to subtraction. We can use base 10 blocks to subtract just like we did to add. The difference is, is that you have to then sometimes break things up, okay? So to use, try these, remember that a square, a hundred flat, can be broken up into 10 tens. And a long, or rod, can be broken into 10 ones. So we're gonna do, um, try these with your base 10 blocks first, and then we'll do them together on the other thing. All right, let me clear my decks here. Okay, so I'm gonna do 14 minus nine. So you start with the number you have. I have 14. I need to take away nine. So I can definitely take away one, two, three, four, but now I have to take that and break it up. Oh, maybe. I want to ungroup. It won't let me ungroup. Oh, technical difficulties. Okay, fine. So we're gonna switch those out. What you would have kids do is just slap them out. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're gonna delete that and we traded it in. What you ki kids will tell you that this is trading. Okay, so I have four already that I took away. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's left? One, two, three, four, five. So 14 minus nine is five, right? All right, try, what's the next one? 23 minus 17. 
Well, let's get rid of all that. So let's put out 23. Here's my 23. Now I have to take away 17. So I can take away 10, right? Let's move that off to the side. And I can take away 3, 11, 12, 13. But in order to get my whole 17, I need some more ones. So I'm going to put out 10 ones. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Get rid of that guy because I broke him up. And I need four more. One, two, three, four. So what's left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, 23 minus 17 is six. You get the idea here. So let's clear what we've got here. Let's set up. All right, so 107 minus 93. Well, there's 100 in seven. I have to take away 93. So I'm going to start with three because that's easier. One, two, three. Now I have to take away 90. So the idea in that case is to ungroup this. I want to, to ungroup. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. So I took away these nine. Let's get rid of them. Goodbye. That's all the stuff I took away. So what's left? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. So 107 minus 93 is 14. The last one is very, oops, sorry, similar. I confused it. Very similar, but it's 107, same as before. Two, three, seven, okay. Minus 98. So the difference in that case is that I don't have eight to take here. So I have to take my nine, my 90 away. Ungroup, let's see, it won't let me do it. So we'll replace that with 10 of these. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We'll get rid of that guy. Well, apparently I'm just gonna take single blocks now. Oh, you Dios mio. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll just pretend that's not there. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to take away nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then with my last 10, I need to be able to break this one up. So I can take eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to delete that because it's ugly. I still didn't get it all. So I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So the base 10 block should make sense. We did that. We can also think about um, subtraction in the same process. Okay expanding it like we did before. 254 minus 72 is the idea of 2 times 10 squared plus 5 times 10 plus 4 minus 7 times 10 plus 2. Okay? It's just that here we get a little sticky, right? That's okay. So we can use the left to right algorithm just like we did for addition for subtraction. I know that you don't think kids will understand what this means, but they do. So here's what happens. You say to them, okay, start in the hundreds place, or start furthest to the left. This is 600 minus 500. So 600 minus 500 is the difference, is 100. And then I have to do 50 minus 70. Well, if I have $50 and I owe you 70, I can pay you, but I still owe you 20. Take away 20 from me still. And then 8 minus 7 is 1. Okay? So now when we combine all this together, we, we do what we did before. We just do the math out loud. 100 minus 20 is 80. Plus 1 is 81. And they have it. So let's try something else. Let's try 592 minus 389. You try it.
works the same way. All right, so I'm going to do 500 minus 300. And that's 200. 90 minus 80 is 10. 2 minus 9, I have $2. I owe you 9, so I still owe you 7. So 200 plus 10 is 210. Minus 7, 203. Again, this is a place value method. So place values maintained, we know what each number means, and we're able to combine them in a way that makes sense. This isn't for every kid, it's not for every person. It's a way that like is great for me over the years. I've learned to really love, but it takes some time to love, okay? So be patient with it. The equal additions algorithm for subtraction um, is the idea that if we add the same amount to two different numbers, the difference between them is the same. So if we think about two numbers on a number line, let's say we have eight and we have 15. The difference between them is seven, right? But if I added two to eight and I made it 11, or three, sorry, and I added three to 15 and made it 18. Well, the difference between 11 and 18 is still seven. So if I add the same thing to both, the distance isn't any different. The difference won't change. So the idea here is to try to make this bottom number, okay, the bottom ones place a zero. So I'm going to add what I need to add to the bottom to make this number nicer to me. And then I'm going to subtract. So to make this bottom number nicer, I'm going to add 5. So that's going to be 75 plus 5 is 80. Okay, and then 157 plus 5 is 162. All right, but I still don't love it entirely because I have to do 6 minus 8. So you can do um, another addition. So I want to maybe make this more than 8 or make it an 8. So I'm going to add 20. Let's see if that helps. That gets me 182 minus 100. Well, that's super simple. It's just 82. And here's the thing. The difference here was 82. The difference here, <coughs> excuse me, was 82. It's 82 no matter what I do, as long as I added the same to both numbers, okay? That is equal additions. The idea is, is to make your bottom number nicer to make the subtraction easier, okay? Counting up is really like using addition to subtract, okay? So we take two numbers. I'm going to subtract 471 minus 293. And I'm going to start with the bottom number and count up to my new one. So I'm going to start at 293 and try to get there. So 293 plus 7 and it's written out at the bottom is 300. Okay, and you got to think about this like a little kid would. I know you can just do the next jump, but you shouldn't. 300 plus 100 is 400. Okay. So I got 7 here, I got 100 here, and then 400 plus 71 is 471. So I get there. But what I added was 7, 71, and 100. Well, I can add those together. 7 and, um, oh, sorry, that's an extra mark. 7 and 1 is 8. 7 and nothing is 7. 178. That means that the difference here, the answer, is 178. I just used addition instead of subtraction. It's counting up. It's the opposite, sort of like a reverse algorithm. All right, you will play name that number. The rules are here. The idea in this game is that you can use as many cards as possible. In this case, you're going to use addition and subtraction. You get the cards, you, you get five cards. Um, your partner gets five cards. You flip over a card from the center pile. It's your target number. You try to make that number using as many cards in your pile as you can. That's your name. Okay, and if you do that, you get to swap out your numbers. 
All right. So you had to know this was coming. We do have to be able to add and subtract in different bases. Okay. If we were adding in another base or subtraction in another base, what would change is just the square, right? What makes a long and a flat? Ones are ones. But in base like three, for example, the long would be three instead of 10. The square, the flat, would be three rows of three, would be nine. It's all different depending on the base. One of the ways we can help ourselves to add and subtract is by making a table. So let's try one for base six. If you want to take a run at this yourself, that's fine. It is really handy maybe, and it, it, I try to do these things in parallel. You use the one that works best for you. It's just like everything else. I start by counting in that base. So if I count in base six, I count zero, one, two, three, four, five. Those are the digits I have, right? After five, I go to the next place value, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then I run out of place value, so I go to 20, 21, 22, 23. So now I can use this to help me think. In base six, zero plus zero is still zero. Zero plus one is one, zero plus two is two, zero plus three is three, zero plus four is four, zero plus five is five, okay? One and zero is one. One and one is two, one and two is three, one and three is four, one and four is five, one and five is six, but I don't have a six. So then we count one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be the same as six. So if we think about base 10, our base, and base six, We're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can sort of parallel that. Okay? So if I have a six in base ten, that's what one plus five would be normally, that's worth ten in base five, six. Okay? So then two plus zero is two, two plus one is three. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 plus 4 is 6. I don't have a 6. Instead, I have a 10. Okay? 2 plus 5 is 7, and then we look at our chart down here. 7 is the same as 11. I'm just at the next place. Okay? All right. 3 plus 0 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 3 plus 4, 2 is 5, and then we run into the same thing, right? 3 plus 3 is 6. We know that a 6 is the same as a 10. 4 plus 3 is 7. We know that's worth 11. 3 plus 5 is 8. Well, if we look at it, that's an 8. 8 worth 12. And we can keep on going. Fill in the rest of the chart. I'm going to fill in the rest here. Five plus five, the last one, is 10, right? That's right here, 14. All right, see how the chart works. So now we can use that to actually add stuff, <coughs> which we'll do in a couple minutes. We actually go a little out of order here, okay. The other thing that's in this section is the idea of estimation. It's really important that kids estimate, that you learn to, you help them learn to say like, oh, it should be about this. It's important when you shop. It's important when you measure. It's important when you do all kinds of things to have a sense of if the answer you have is reasonable, okay? <clears throat> all right. So there's a whole bunch of different mental math estimation skills. We add from the left. Well, 60 plus 30 is 90. 90 plus... 7 is 97, 90 plus 97 plus 6 is 103. So that's less estimation and then more mental math. We want to be able to do this in our head. So that's one way we can do math in our head. Another way is what they call breaking up and bridging. It's basically um, breaking the second number. Okay, so 67 plus 30 is 97. 97 plus 6. Ooh. 
is 103. That's all. Trading off is, so in addition, we, if it's different than the equal additions methods for subtraction, what I want to do is um, sort of even them out. In addition, I can't change the distance, but I can um, take something from one. If I take three from this one, I can add it to the other guy and make the numbers a little nicer. So it's just that I have a pile of 67, I have a pile of 36. I can take some out of my 36 pile and shoot them over to the 67 pile to make it easier to do the math in my head. So 70 plus 33 is 103. That's a lot easier to do in my head than 67 plus 36. Compatible numbers. Add the things that are easy first. Look, 50 plus 50 is 100. Uh, 70 and 130 is 200. I have a 20 left. That means I have 320. I don't have to add those in order. Addition is commutative. Do whatever you want. Making compatible numbers. Um, when we talk about compatible numbers, we think about, we don't have to use 79 as 79. I can use part of it. What would be really nice is a 75. So 75 plus 25 gets me to 100 in my head. And then I know I have four left from the 79. So 100 plus four is 104. That's 79 plus 25. Breaking up and bridging we can also do for subtraction. So we just do the nicer part first. We do 67 minus 30, which gets me 37. 37 minus 6 gets me 31. Trading off works the same way. So I can give some from one to the other. So I'm going to take one down there. So I can do 70. Uh, Oh, sorry, I'm in subtraction. We have to take the same amount off both, right? We have to keep the difference the same, yikes. So 70 and 38 is one way to do it, okay? Or I can add one to each, which would be even nicer. 72 plus, or sorry, minus 40. That's a much easier thing to do, so we could get 32. So the distance between these two is 32. I added the same to both. It was plus one, plus one from the original. All right, we can drop the zeros. You know this. They're not important there. I use them at the end in the answer, but they're, I don't care about subtracting them, so I get 83, 100. All right, so we, when we do mental math, we, if you've ever done any um, retail work, you've had somebody give you money, right? Um, so you can think about mental math based on a cashier. If you say, here's an example, Noah owed $11 for groceries. He used a $50 bill to pay. And when the guy gave him his change, the cashier said, oh, said, what word is that? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 30, 50. How much change did he get? Can you figure it out from there? Well, that's one, two, three, four dollars, right? 10, or sorry, 5, so that would be 9, plus 10 is 19, plus another 20 is 39, and that makes sense. I can count in here, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 19, 39. And 50 minus 11 would be 39, okay? All right, so now let's do some adding and subtracting in other bases. You can use the chart for this. You can do whatever it is that makes sense. You can make yourself a little parallel number lines. 555 plus 1 in base 6. Remember what the digits are. I don't have a 6 in base 6. I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So think about what happens when you are as far as you go, right? When we're as far as we go and we move to the next place value. So if I added one more to that, I can't go to 556. Five, That's not right. But what I have to do is go to the next whole place value. The next whole place value after this, just like after 55, 
I'd go to 100. After this, I would go to 1,000. So 555 in base 6 plus 1 in base 6 is 1,000 in base 6. All right, let's do 453 and 34 in base 6. You can use your chart, right? What was 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 in base is 7. In base 6, that was worth, I'm not on the right page, 7 was worth 11. So I'm going to put down the 1, carry the 1. 5 and 3 is 8, plus 1 is 9. What was 9 worth in base uh, 6? 9 was worth 13. Okay, let's put down the 3, carry the 1. 1 and 4 is 5, I have a 5. So these two together in base 6 make 531. Correct. So 232, oh gosh, 232 minus 33. This is a tricky thing to do, okay? So when I borrow, okay, when we regroup in a base, we regroup, think about if we had base 10 blocks in a 6. The longs would have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that would be our base. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay. So when we borrow, we borrow that much. We borrow, that's the value of what we're borrowing. So I would have to borrow and make that a one. I'm borrowing six. That's what a 10 is worth. Sounds crazy. So three plus six would get me nine. I don't really have a nine. We're going to deal with that in a second. What's a nine worth in base six? A nine is worth, hmm, do, 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 do. I lost it on my paper. Uh, three plus, well, three plus six is nine. Nine is worth 13. So we'll do a 13 there instead. Okay. Now I have to borrow again. I have to borrow from that to begin with. I have to take one away. So that's a 12. I have to add it to here. Six and two would be eight. What's an eight worth in base six? An eight is worth 12, right? So 12 minus three in base six. Think about that number line. So I want zero, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 11, 12, right? So if I have to take away three, I'm going one, two, three, that gets me to five, okay? That's gonna get me to five because it's the same 12, and that's a one. So 232 minus 33 is 155 in base six. We're not gonna worry about that one right now. I think you guys have had enough. So go practice. If you need to watch the video again, do, okay? If you have questions, email, use your buddies or your partners, sorry, my daughter has buddies at school, that's what we talk about, and we'll go from there. Uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you guys.